Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a drama film, Persian Lessons. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young Jewish man named Gilles, captured and arrested along with the other Jews by the German soldiers. While on their way to the concentration and labor camp, an unknown man in the truck begins interacting with Gilles. The strange man starts asking for food in exchange for his limited edition book. Skeptical at first, Gilles generously chooses to offer half of his handful of bread to get the book. As he reads and skims the pages, he realizes that this book contains Persian legends and poetry. In the middle of their trip to the camp, the soldiers abruptly plan to kill and gun these detained individuals. They stop in the forest, and unhesitatingly shoot the defenseless Jews. When the soldiers attempt to fire their rifles at the Jews, Gilles drops on purpose to make them believe that he is dead. Unluckily, one of the soldiers recognizes the Jewish tactics, so he tries to kill Gilles again. However, the Persian legend's book becomes a saving grace, when Gilles stops them from killing him. He insists that he is just misidentified as a Jew. With such desperation, he then shows the book to convince them, and prove the nationality is half Persian. Coincidentally, the soldiers have been looking for Persian as ordered by their officer. Indeed, Gilles' simple, generous act of sharing the bread saves him from total devastation temporarily. Little does he know how simple Persian poetry can be a blessing in disguise, and offer new chances of living. Meanwhile, a mid-grade officer in charge of the concentration camp's kitchen, named Koch, gets hysterical because of his secretary's incomprehensible penmanship to the logbook. When the soldiers arrive at the base, they quickly send Gilles to the kitchen officer, as he has been waiting for the chance of having a Persian prisoner. Furthermore, the kitchen officer seeks to learn the Persian language, Farsi, to build a restaurant in Iran once the war is over. With his untruthful claims, Gilles receives several questions and interrogations from the doubtful kitchen officer. Eventually, he convinces the kitchen officer about his false nationality, by emphasizing he owns the book, and translating a few words into fake Farsi. These fabrications and lies allow him to extend his life and escape sudden death. Since Gilles successfully persuades the officer about his fake nationality, he will work in the kitchen every day. He will also go to the office to teach the Farsi language. One day, the camp imposes its strict internal regulations and rules on the new prisoners. An atmosphere of fear arises among the Jews, as failure to obey the task can cause death. Gilles cautiously works on his first day in the kitchen, while worrying about his most essential job every shift, teaching the kitchen officer about Farsi. What makes him worried and afraid is he is also not familiar with the said language. To survive the chambers of hell, he rigorously invents new words on top of his mind for every piece of equipment he sees in the kitchen. He tries to memorize all the newly created words for consistency of the translation, and to avoid any suspicion. While working in the kitchen, he recites those words silently to recall all the gibberish. During the first night of teaching, Gilles discovers the primary reason why the kitchen officer is eager to learn the language. This is because the officer plans to migrate to Iran, meet his brother, and follow his restaurant pursuits. They start with the Farsi translation of the things in the kitchen or food, and aim for six words a day. Luckily, Gilles' efforts pay off since he remembers all the words he just invented. Not only that, these words become his prayer at night, as he keeps on saying those words to remember them by heart. One day, while the kitchen officer reads what they have studied, the jealous soldier enters his room to report something. According to the soldier, Gilles is pretending to be a Persian who is Jewish by blood. Unfortunately, the kitchen officer does not believe the soldier's assumptions, as it appears to be baseless and invalid. Consequently, the kitchen officer also removes his previous secretary due to unreadable handwriting. He then assigns Gilles to write legibly in the register's book. Although the kitchen officer does not consider the previous soldier's report, he still wants to ensure that Gilles is telling the truth of being a real Persian. Testing the honesty of the clever young man, the kitchen officer decides to assign 40 words to be translated in one night. In the afternoon, the previous secretary expresses her distress to the soldier, after being replaced in writing the prisoner's log. They then plan to kill and eliminate the Gilles out of their way. The soldier executes his plan, when the young man is about to throw the garbage. The jealous soldier lets Gilles escape, and encourages him to run out of the camp. With no question, Gilles briskly runs for his life, until he meets a white-haired older man in the middle of the forest. This white-haired older man stops him from running, and enlightens him that there is no way to escape in the said forest. Gilles conveys his frustrations of having to invent 40 words and remembering them all. Finally, he decides to go back to the site for his safety. Then, Gilles arrives at the camp safely as if nothing happens. 
The jealous soldier and the former secretary get surprised after they both see him again in the center. After a few minutes, the kitchen officer calls Gilles for his new task, which is to write the names of the new prisoners in the camp. As he begins writing the names of the newly arrived prisoners, he agonizes about the 40 words he needs to teach to the kitchen officer. With such a confused gaze at the list, he then formulates a bright idea of inventing words from the names in the register's book. When the short-tempered kitchen officer begins asking him the equivalent words, Gilles successfully pronounces and creates the given terms. His impeccable wit leads him to make the gibberish sounds like a Farsi language. Despite the fear of getting caught, Gilles passionately strives to invent and memorize words every day. While serving food to his fellow Jews in the morning, he creates a habit of asking their names one by one and trying to recall them all. He then formulates or extracts gibberish from these first and last names. Meanwhile, the persistent kitchen officer not only learns a new set of words each day, but masters and practices them at night. The said officer enjoys adding words each day to his vocabulary and never stops asking the young man for new translations. One morning, the camp commandant calls the attention of the kitchen officer for an important task. When the kitchen officer arrives at the office, the commandant asks him about his journey and his plans for the Persian language. The commandant then declares his task to organize a picnic and prepare the best foods for 30 people. The night before the celebration, the young man helps the kitchen officer cook the best recipe. Meanwhile, the persistent kitchen officer learns a set of words each day and masters them at night. The said officer enjoys adding words to his vocabulary and never ceases to ask Jill for new translations. In addition, a bond of friendship starts to form as the kitchen officer begins sharing his life. He also becomes intrigued and starts asking questions about concepts such as love and hope. At the picnic event, German soldiers surround the forest with their rhapsody and overwhelming symphony as they sing together. Since Gilles is under the supervision of the kitchen officer, he is one of the chosen food servers at the said celebration. While preparing for the next dish, a terrifying commotion arises. The joyful ambience turns into shame when the short-tempered kitchen officer asks him about the Farsi language of tree. Unluckily, Gilles unknowingly answers a familiar gibberish, a term he used already to translate the word bread. With his response, the joyful kitchen officer exhibits his evil side, as he suspects a lie. He cries in anger, and rapidly punches Gilles' face several times until blood emerges. He even kicks the face that causes the young man to fall off the ground. At the end of the party, the kitchen officer would like to make Gilles' life miserable, so he sends him to the jealous soldier. From then Gilles will no longer work in the kitchen anymore, but will endure the pain at the quarry. The next day, he begins working in the quarry, in which the tasks are heavier than his last designation. What makes it more difficult is that the soldiers always bully and punish him in the middle. Until one day, he trembles and collapses due to extreme tiredness and hunger. He passes out, which leads the soldiers to send him to the barracks. While Gilles is resting in the barracks, he remains weak and unconscious. However, the soldier notices that he has been uttering incomprehensible words redundantly. The soldier reports the issue to the kitchen officer, to see if the said officer can understand what Gilles is saying. As he learns gibberish by heart, Gilles surprisingly utters his invented words repeatedly, conveying a specific message about his mother. When the kitchen officer hears the young man's phrases, he completely understands everything. After what the officer discovers, he then concludes again that the man is a Persian. He then sends him to the hospital for immediate recovery. One morning, Gilles wakes up in the hospital and regains consciousness. He receives an order and permission to work again under his superior kitchen officer. He teaches the kitchen officer by testing his current Farsi vocabulary, which is meaningless. This time, the kitchen officer becomes apologetic for the violence he has previously done against him at the picnic. Next, the kitchen officer goes to the commandant for a request, since an order of prisoner transport and relocation is approaching. He asks the commandant to exclude and keep the Persian man, as he realizes his importance. The commandant responds with a question and a report, but eventually agrees on the request. The following night, their teaching session becomes meaningful, as they begin conversing using the invented gibberish language. They start having dialogue, and the kitchen officer gradually shares the details of his life. We can surmise how the young Jewish passionately creates these words and learn them by the soul to survive. Though all the phrases are meaningless in reality, manages to melt the heart of a cruel reserved officer. After the relocation, Gilles firmly stands his secret, while there are no pieces of evidence of truth. He walks on the camp, reflecting on the words he needs to add and translate again. 
Whenever he finds a word, he will convert it based on the emotion he sees or feels. While serving food to the prisoners, he develops a habit of asking their names and forming a word from each first and last name. The following day, Gilles works in the kitchen and performs his daily tasks typically. While baking the bread and pastry, he witnesses how the Nazi and the German soldiers mercilessly beat a mute Italian prisoner for a tiny mistake of being tired. His heart crumples after seeing the violence and cruelty towards the helpless Italian prisoner. A short while later, the kitchen officer creates a poem using the acquired language and immediately shares it with Gilles. Additionally, kindness begins to develop in the kitchen officer's heart after offering food for him. At first, Gilles refuses to eat the food as he plans to bring it with a mute prisoner. The kitchen officer insists and offers him a can of meat to get to the barracks. With this piece of food, Gilles secretly gives the can to the mute prisoner, which makes the older brother grateful to him. However, the biggest threat to all the creative lies starts to appear. The jealous soldier finds a true-blooded Persian in their new sets of prisoners. He plans to confront the pretentious Gilles and bring him to the real one for a revelation. He also feels victorious as he sees this as a bridge to expose and kill Gilles. On the other hand, Gilles becomes anxious as these secrets can lead to his last breath. However, the moment of truth sinks in vain when the real Persian prisoner gets killed. While the jealous soldier brings the young man to the barracks, they both recognize the blood flowing in the neck of the true-blooded Persian. The jealous soldier attacks and strangles Gilles tightly. He believes that behind this murder is the pretentious Gilles. Just a few seconds later, the older brother of the Italian prisoner interrupts and says that he is responsible for the crime. With no question, the soldier angrily strikes his rifle that ends the older Italian's life. The same day, the commander also declares a meeting among the officers for a possible transport of their prisoners as the war is approaching. Not long after, the kitchen officer meets Gilles to assure his safety. According to the kitchen officer, he will make sure that Gilles will never be on the transport list. He also becomes apologetic for the death of an Italian friend. Before the transport of the prisoners, Gilles exchanges coats with the mute prisoner who lost his brother. He decides to selflessly take over the place of the Italian in the transport. As the prisoners get closer to their destination, the kitchen officer receives information about the young Gilles. He then hurriedly chases and orders to claim Gilles and take him away from the transport. The movie ends with the kitchen officer and Gilles, who are separating their ways. The officer, with the acquired language, is now ready to flee to Iran and pursue his plans. Finally, Gilles escapes the transport and will go the other direction in the forest. At the closure of the film, the kitchen officer's dream collapses as the language acquired has no meaning and is mere gibberish. Meanwhile, Jill testifies the injustice by giving all the names of the victims, the names which became his source of secret, known as Persian lessons. Truly, the movie emphasizes the creative but desperate ways of a young man in the middle of suffering. It was based on real-life events, orchestrating the desperation to survive war and injustice. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.